F5 Local Traffic Manager iApps concepts. So now we're getting into some of the more in-depth intelligence that is really, you know, just spread throughout these entire systems here. Cool stuff. Let's dive in. You gotta admit that managing applications is much more complicated today than it was five years ago. And really, by that same token, honestly, by this time next year, it's gonna be significantly more complicated. Just all of the virtualization, all the things that we're adding in, all the stuff that we're doing differently in optimizing today's networks is going to make the changes happen even faster. So interesting thing is, you know, when we get down and look at this, we've seen a lot of the configuration on our ADC already. A lot of the virtual servers, a lot of the pools, a lot of the, the details, the profiles, the stuff. You know, we, we've gone over those in previous nuggets on here. IAPS is a different way of managing that application delivery. And really the emphasis on here, and we've kind of said this for a number of things, but the emphasis is on the application. Right? Now, that makes it more interesting when we start looking at this from, you know, what is it we're doing? We're sitting there configuring all this stuff. Okay, the emphasis is not on the configuration or, you know, on the application at that point in time. It's on the configuration. It's on what am I doing in the ADC? What am I doing in a router? What am I doing in a server? What am I doing in the switch? Basically, what the hell am I doing? Right? And instead, we need to put the focus back to the application. There are certain things that we kind of sit, you know, start to look at in here where any one person, you know, or I guess let me rephrase this, any job to roll out an application is rarely a one-person job anymore. Okay? You got network guys, you got server guys, you may have ADC guys, you know, the F5 guys, whatever it is that we're looking at in there, you got multiple people involved to get that entire picture to treat the application the way that it should be in order to optimize it, you know, through the through the network and manage the nice little user experience over here and make everybody all happy. Well, IAPS is just kind of a different way of doing this. It is a framework that allows us to manage that application delivery, allows us to put the focus back over here on that app. Okay? It's a framework that allows templates for configuration of applications, which is really kind of cool. But basically what it's designed to do is abstract the configuration from here. Okay? So we have, it may have multiple ADCs, you may have multiple places, multiple things going on, because remember we can deploy these in a number of different ways. There may be multiple pieces involved, all centered around how we best serve this application. Well, IAPS framework gives me the ability of abstracting that to push a set of configuration around, if you will. I kind of make a neat way to do this. Now, this may seem like kind of a bass backwards way of explaining things, but it's kind of sort of the same thing as iRules. It, yeah, I know, you, you and I really haven't talked about iRules yet. Those are coming in the future, okay, but bear with me for a second, okay? So iRules, let me put those down here. iRules is TCL scripting. All right, so basically a method of automating things. All right, so fair enough. It's, it, it's a way to control application flow and delivery in there. But iRules, you gotta keep in mind, is a data plane. All right, so everything I'm doing with iRules is gonna be in the data plane thing. However, when, you know, or I should say with iRules, we start to dictate how we process traffic, how we move things around, how it's handled by the ADC. Whereas iApps, on the other hand, dictates the user interface side of it, the configuration object part of it, and really that interaction in there. So where iApps is to the data plane, or I'm sorry, iRules is to the data plane, iApps is to the control plane or config plane, however you want to look at that, the management plane. All right. So a little bit different way of thinking about these things in here. But basically what we're doing is creating a template-based way of establishing the workflow. 
But the workflow in here, you know, to, to use some big fancy words, is to, words, is to manage multiple hom uh, homogenous applications. It does work better to use fancy words if I can actually say the fancy words as we go. But beyond that, okay, it, it, it's a workflow for the configuration of those things. Application services bundles and managing most of my big IP objects in here, uh, like virtual servers, pools, pool members, profiles, monitors, things like that. Okay, so let me go ahead and, and write those down so we know uh, what we're doing. So we got app services. And this would be what we'll create with the templates, okay? And they will be managing our virtual servers, our pools, and members. Uh, what else do we talk about? Uh, profiles, monitors, health monitors, and we'll just say etc. Okay, so other things. So my application services bundle, or my configuration object bundle, if you will, is going to be set up by this workflow in here. Now my framework in here actually consists of four parts. Okay, so iApps framework down here is going to have uh, application services. It's going to have templates. It's going to have uh, analytics, and we'll call the statistics as part of that and everything else. And we also have something called Dev Central. Now, Dev Central is part of F5's website. It's, it's an ecosystem, if you will. Uh, it gives us the ability of sharing things in there. These things, let's see, templates feed up into that. Applic analytics are a little bit different. But, you know, all of these things in here kind of give us this customized method of deploying my application. Right. So all the cool things that I have going on just surrounding that part in there. And we'll see the different pieces involved with it. But the templates are going to help me deploy the application services. Uh, there's actually separate profiles for my analytics, all of which give me a focused view of analyzing and statistics and stuff like that specific to that application that we happen to be talking about. Okay. So these are kind of, I guess, cool ways, if you will, of putting out a new application in there. Okay. So all of these templates, by the way, are designed to have a consistent deployment of your applications. Uh, you know, previous to, to the iApps, like we said over here, we had to configure all these things separately. And really, we've done that so far, so you've kind of seen us, how we've built those uh, ideas in here. Now we have a way to kind of speed up that whole process. Because before, we had to configure our virtual servers, our pools, uh, our pool members, our profiles, our policies, our iRules, all those things independently for each of the application that we desired. Basically, lots and lots of time, lots and lots of configuration, lots and lots of room for errors, especially when we're dealing with large enterprise versions of things. Now, neat thing is, iApps can ask you a few questions and really go through and build stuff for you. So based on your answers to the questions, the big IP system will actually create these objects for you. Now, how cool is that? You know, that we don't have to do this stuff or we don't have to go through there manually and do all that information. Just if they, you know, pop it in there, ask a few things, uh, you know, do stuff going on. Oh, by the way, it does depend, of course, a little bit anyway, on your current licensing and provisioning. So you may be prompted to uh, re-update your license or re-up your provisioning for any new modules as necessary. So do watch out the answers that you give because, well, the system's going to do exactly what you tell it to. <laughs> okay, Maybe not what you have to pay, have paid for in the past, but, you know, it's the small things in life. So, you know, just kind of an interesting statistic on here. According to F5, it takes approximately 68 days to successfully deploy a fully load balanced and fully set up uh, ex Microsoft Exchange 2010 server from the ground up. So this is just the, the load balancing of a cluster of Microsoft servers. With an IAP point of view, we actually get a 96% of reduction in the number of steps and a 90% reduction in the amount of time it takes to fully deploy, you know, gathering information, testing it, making sure that the users can get their experience on there. 
So this can be a great time-saving device, according to the stats anyway, in larger deployments. Okay? In the meantime, it's something cool for us to do and an interesting way to be looking at things. Uh, now, we are allowed to go in here uh, and, and kind of create and edit and monitor or otherwise view things based on specific applications. So we kind of have the, you know, the single component view of all my configuration and monitoring tools in here. We can go in here and do this by, by kind of combining everything and save a whole lot of time as opposed to sifting through page after page after page for all those simple tasks. Now. As a general rule, and this kind of changes things a little bit, when we start looking at my templates, okay, as far as editing templates, the admin is the only one who can actually edit a template. Okay? The administrator, uh, application editor, manager, and resource admin can all uh, manage application services, but when it comes to editing the details of a template, you have to be the administrator role, my, my user-based role of doing things in here. Okay? So when we start looking at all the stuff, that's going to be important to know who we're logged in as. In our lab environment here, everything you and I have done so far, it's been in an admin role, so we're not going to have any problems. But real life, that may be something else to, to actually pay attention to in there uh, and to make sure that you have the correct role uh, of, of user involved. Okay? <clears throat> So as we start looking at things, there's, uh, I guess, one other important piece to note. When we're looking at um, my templates, okay, there, there's another, there's a setting in there. Um, you know, where I want to draw the line, I'll, I'll put a different color here for it. So one of the settings in there is something called a strict update. Okay. Now, this is, it's, an, it's enabled by default, okay? We can turn it on or off, I guess, if you want to. It, it, we only find it in the advanced properties, uh, the advanced view of properties. Bottom line, I, I wouldn't touch it unless you've got a real good need to. This helps in multiple uh, administrator scenarios. So if you're in a larger organization and you have multiple people working on things, and especially multiple people working on different templates and application profiles or application services uh, and things like that going on, keep the strict update in place because what this will be sure of is that nobody else can edit or remove or break something that is tied into an application service profile. Uh, so make sure to you know help prevent the accidental changes in, in any of your application services configurations. So you don't want surprises. So I'd leave that setting alone, but it's kind of a good thing to go ahead and point out for larger environments uh, and may also be something that we need to know moving forward here. Exams. Now let me kind of clear this off here real quick and start being able to spell some more things out because what we're going to talk about now is templates in a little bit more detail A T S. Okay. so templates is really where all the power comes from in here and and I mean your, your numbers are going to vary but I'll just list it as uh, 23 plus okay. so I think 11.1 of the big IP software had 23 templates or maybe more in later releases so we'll just kind of leave it at that but 23 plus templates included oh by the way the IAPS was introduced in uh, big IP version 11 okay. so just in case you need to know where it came from or run across an old server along the way and you don't see this stuff at all that would be why okay. so you got to go to big IP software version 11.0 or later to get IAPS <clears throat> in the event so 23 different templates, you know, plus, of course, we have the ability of, of creating our own, but we've got everything in here, uh, you know, from uh, a simple HTTP server to, you know, things like Microsoft Exchange, uh, Microsoft Link, you know, which is a, a definitely something that, that is, is useful to have help with in deploying. Um, SharePoint will be another one of those. And other things, you know, like my, my ERP services, so Oracle, um, SAP, uh, and others. So at all, by the way, is Latin for and others. Yeah, just vast collection of useless knowledge. That will not be on the exam. 
<laughs> so anyway, as you learn these new technologies from uh, you know other wonderful trainers here at CPT Nuggets, honestly, now you will be able to know or now you know how you can go in and more successfully deploy always available services out of your clusters of servers and applications to your users via an ADC. Uh, so all the cool stuff. So now we can bring in more training, more stuff, more things to know about, and have it all templatized and controlled in here. Now, neat stuff. Okay? So my templates are actually a combination of different languages and things that you were used to create them. They actually have three distinct separate sections. There is an implementation section. Uh, and the interesting thing here is that this is what's well, called um, uh, TMSH script. That's an H, not an A. Okay, so TMSH script, so my traffic management shell. Um, <clears throat> but really, it's a it's a tickle variant. Okay, so TCL. And what this is used is this actually performs the actions of configuration. So this is what creates the code, the CLI code, if you will, the TMSH code um, for deploying my virtual servers, my pools, my profiles, and all that stuff. We have a presentation section, which is actually something called APL. Okay, this is an application presentation language. And this is a script language used to create the, well, basically the input GUI. Okay, so the questions that you'll be asked or things that will determine, you know, what flows into uh, this information up here. And then we have a help section, which interestingly enough is written in HTML and just designed to, to give you help with answering those questions right there. Huh? So kind of a neat thing that we got not only three different sections, but three completely different languages or, or uh, programming languages, essentially, to bring all of this together. Now, while these may get really large and complicated, uh, the TCL and the APL portions can both do uh, include files. So kind of like we do in like C, you know, C++ or Pascal or, or program languages, okay, when we can include... You include, okay, when we can include files, basically you, you have an idea of being able to reuse code between templates. So this may actually ease your deployment, uh, allow you to kind of reuse things if you, you know, either you see something that you like or develop your own or whatever you're going to go with. And so a lot of cool ideas that we can do in there to make these uh, a little bit smaller, a little bit more manageable in there. So that's kind of a neat thing with templates. That's my, my baseline as far as where templates are going to go. Now, and again, I'm going to kind of clear this off a little bit as we go in here, because my next area, an important area that's all part of IAPS, is the analytics. All right, so the wonderful world of analytics. Basically, this is, well, I, another thing would be to call it um, application visibility and reporting. Okay, AVR. Now, depending on how good or how photographic your memory is, you've seen AVR before. Now, it's been a while. Okay, So you and I discussed it back when we started first talking about uh, the different devices and the license types for F5 because AVR is a licensable portion. It is also a resource provisioned portion. Okay, so it's a module that has to be loaded on the ADC. So in order to truly get into this application of visibility and reporting, you have to be running it. Okay, so that's going to be one of the pieces in here. So that is one part. But AVR gives me the ability to analyze an application's performance, like in depth. Okay, web apps, all sorts of cool things in there. We can look at things, uh, I mean, not just web apps, so it's not just your HTML portion, but really things concerning my uh, servers themselves. 
So uh, stuff like transactions per second, um, bandwidth, throughput, uh, latency, number sessions, all sorts of stats like that. You know, whether I can spread things out between the virtual servers, the pools, uh, the applications, all of this stuff can be viewed on a per app basis. Uh, and that's pretty important for monitoring my systems. Remember, we're trying to bring the focus back here to the application. That's the most important part. Well, I guess the users are kind of important too, but eh, you know, without the application, we wouldn't have them anyway. So whatever. So that's all going to be an important piece of where we're going with this. Now, when I'm doing this, there are actually analytics profiles. All right. The analytics profiles are created in my standard profile place, so we'll see them in there. Uh, and, and they let you pick and choose the right type and amount of information that you want to have for your, you know, monitoring that particular application. On um, some things, like a, let's say a Microsoft Exchange server, you may not care about the number of transactions per second, but on the other hand, you do care about the latency. You do care about the total number of sessions. So, you know, different things that you get going on based on what application it is, you can, uh, you know, create or, or center your statistics, your analytics based on what you need out of that application. Okay? So you can, you can create custom um, uh, profiles as well or, or get either the same or wildly different information about each different server, each different virtual server for that matter. Now, by the way, each virtual server can have one and only one analytics profile tied to it. Uh, so that is kind of the only catch. But still, I can I can vary them depending on what the application is or what the thing that I have going on is. Because remember, each app is a different virtual server anyway. Now, that AVR module, like we discussed, must be licensed and have resources provisioned in order to actually work. Okay? So, um, oh, another thing is to, to do this. Uh, my client, so my viewer, is Flash. So whatever workstation you're going to view the analytics on, you do have to have Flash installed. Honestly, it's probably not that big of a deal, but it does, at least right now, mean that I can't do it on things like an iPad. Kind of sucks, I know. Not, not, not much we can do about that at the moment. But moving forward, who knows? Maybe that part will change in there. We'll, we'll see where we go with that. Now, everything that we're going to do from setting up my profiles is the same place that we set up profiles before. And, I mean, we only did those a, a few nuggets ago. So, so where was that at? Yep, yep. So under my local traffic and then profiles menu. Absolutely. Now, here's a catchy thing. If you don't see analytics in there, that's a pretty good indicator that you either don't have a license or you haven't set up your provisioning yet. I guess it could also mean you don't have sufficient privileges as the user that you're on, um, but chances are it's one of the first two. So at least right now in our lab environment, that'll definitely be the answer. So something to think about in there and something that, uh, that we definitely do need to check. Now, if you want to do analytics for a virtual, uh, virtual server, just create and apply the analytics profile. No big deal to it. If you want to do this for an iApp, on the other hand, you have to create this first. Then the iApp. Okay. So depending on what part of the profile, standard virtual server, anytime, go back and apply it, knock yourself out. IAP though, the, the analytics profile must be done ahead of time. So just little, one of those little small things. The system, by the way, can also set up alerts, so different thresholds and things like that. You can customize all sorts of values on stuff based on what you want for that application. You know, like we said, transactions per second, latency, throughput, load times, all of those things all to do in here, all in order to manage the application portion of things. That's the analytics part. And that's the other cool side to iApps and what all we're going to be doing. So our first foray into the wonderful world of iApps. Uh, and we really discussed the framework that we're building about in here, where our application services are built off of templates. Okay, so it gives us kind of a starting point and, and really creating our own and everything else in there. Uh, we also had the analytics profiles in there as well. So everything we're doing is, again, to, to kind of surround how we actually optimize. 
So optimize application deployment. Make things easier for us, make things better for the application, and all around make our user experience that much better and that much more, well, accessible. I suppose it's probably a good word in there. But give us all the right information in the right places at the right time. So cool stuff to know, cool stuff to get into, and now let's next, in our next nugget, get into the configuration of that and see those details in action. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.